Acts, the second chapter. <laughs> and the forty second through forty seven verses. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together had all things common. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men and every man had need, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church, dearly such as should be saved. I want you to let's underscore the 42nd verse said, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Don't forget the last word, prayers. As we go to the book of St. Luke, chapter 18, praise the Lord. I'll be a few moments. This is women's night. Jesus is giving a parable here. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying there was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me, mine adversary. He would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And I want to talk some tonight about, I know what prayer can do. Now, I want to underscore this with a sub, if I may. And I want you to bless about three people. And I know you don't mind doing that. And I want you to just get up and shake about three people's hand and tell them you can't lose with the stuff I use. Would you do that? Thank the Lord. You, you know why? It's because I know what prayer can do. And when you know what prayer can do, you can't lose. Because that's the stuff that we got to use. Now, in uh, the book of Acts, where they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctoring and fellowship breaking of bread and in prayers if there's going to be a continuation in fellowship and breaking of bread there must be some praying going on there's a lot of folk that want to do everything but pray uh, 
God. They want fellowship, but they don't want to pray. And many don't want to break the bread. Amen. But you can't lose with the stuff that we use. You know, somebody here has been praying. Amen. I thank God for what he spoke to me about uh, just before the sun went down. And he hooked me into this same chain from Monday night. Now, praying and prayers, there are three kinds of prayers. There is an intercessory prayer. There is a closet prayer. And there is a public prayer. And sometimes people get prayers confused. And they come and play, pray a uh, closet prayer in public. Oh, and you hear so many times when that ought to have been prayed at home. In your secret closet. And they come praying that prayer in public. Amen. And it's just like, you know, people telling their wife that they love them. And they wait till they come among people and say, I love you. And they never said behind the closed door. Amen. So there is an intercessory prayer. And that's where we petition God for others. Uh, we pray for our enemy. We pray for those that despitefully use us. And our closet prayer we shut off and we pray. And, and we don't let nobody know what we are praying about. We don't have to go and broadcast that we are praying for this brother are praying for that sister. We just pray in secret. And see if God won't reward us openly. And the public prayer is when we pray as we have prayed here tonight. There are some folk that come and pray all of those wine and shield prayers. Well, that's a deaf, dead man's prayer. Amen. But we are to pray publicly and pray for that particular service. Amen. Amen. So because I know what prayer can do. You know, I ought to have a lot of witnesses in here. Because I ought to have somebody here that knows something about prayer. Uh, praying and praying until sometime your nose gets snotty praying. Praying and praying until you run out of words to say and then the spirit just began to pray for you. Have you ever prayed like that? Well, I remember the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost like that. You know, the folk had, I, they told me to call Jesus and I called him and, and I called him and I called him and I called him some more and I called him some more. And he even went back to services time and time again calling Jesus. And they wanted me to get the Holy Ghost so bad. Until he said, close your eyes and call him. And I, I closed my eyes and I called him and, and looked like I wasn't going to get it. And, and one of the sisters hit me in the stomach. And you know, when you got your eyes closed and you're not breath, or you know, you're not uh, uh, protecting yourself here, you know, it'll just take the wind out you. So I was saying, Jesus, Jesus, <coughs> Jesus, 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 Jesus. And then I went on calling Jesus and, and I had one eye, you know, kind of closed and, and the other one kind of opened there. I want to make sure that I wouldn't get that hit again. But they really wanted me to have the Holy Ghost. And, and they, 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 they prayed for me, prayed for me. But when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, I wasn't saying anything. All of the Jesuses had got down in my belly and couldn't nothing happen, but they just had to come up. Speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God. If you get enough Jesus down in your belly, it'll do the work. I ought to have somebody know what I'm talking about. I won't be long. I, 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 you know, my daughter, she said, Daddy, don't say that all the time. You won't be long. I said, well, I'm not going to be long. I don't know how long the Holy Ghost is going to be. But I'm not going to be long. Because I know what prayer can do. Prayer will see you through. And another thing, if you know how to pray, you can't lose with the kind of stuff that we use. I know the devil is mad with that. And if you know how to pray, he's mad with you. Because the church, they continued in fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayer. Praise the Lord. Now, praying a prayer 
is to pray is to communicate with God. And we know more about other folk business than we do about God's business. It's because we talk to other folk about other folk business more than we talk about God up to about our own business. But it is to address God in adoration, our confession, supplication, our thanksgiving. When you pray, and you pray without a thanksgiving, you hadn't prayed yet. Y'all don't hear me. When you pray, and in the conclusion of your prayer, there should be a thank you, Jesus. And if you can't say it in a sincere heart, you need to keep on praying. Until God do something to your inner man where you can get up and say, Lord, I thank you for what you've done for me. Because when you pray, you can't lose. Let the devil know that you can't lose with the stuff that we use. Do y'all know anything about this stuff? If you've been saved for a while, you know something about what I'm talking about. Because I know that you've had to pray and you've had to get down to business. And I feel tonight that there are a lot of folk are down to business tonight over some situations. Well, we're going to serve notice on the devil tonight is that you can't lose with the kind of stuff that we use. Come on, say amen. A few more minutes and I'm going to move on a little bit further. <clears throat> now, there are some things that hinders I pray. We pray and we pray and seem like nothing is we're not getting a breakthrough. Something may be on the line that's not right. There are a lot of people praying and they got blocks in their prayer life. They got blockages just like your arteries in your body can become blocked and you just can't get good circulation. Well, in the spirit, there are some things that can block your spiritual prayer life. Well, let's look at it and see uh, what, 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 what David says in Psalms chapter, verse chapter 66, verse number 18. He says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. But verily God had heard me, he had attended to the voice of my prayer. So David is saying that if he regarded iniquity in his heart, the Lord would not hear his prayer. So in other words, what is iniquity? You got envy in your heart. And there's a lot of these hikamasas that's all messed up with a whole lot of mess in their heart. And they cannot get a prayer through. You know, I don't want anybody praying for me because you don't know what they are praying off of. All of that unforgiving heart and that unforgiving spirit that they have and they need to get us free circulation so the spirit can flow. You can tell when someone is praying. This is a topic that folk don't like to talk about because many folk don't like to pray. Mm -hmm. If you call a prayer meeting, you can't get but a faithful few. But if you call a musical, you can pack the house. So prayer goes along with our praise. I'm going to get to that a little bit later. Because you can't lose with the stuff that we use. That's good news to me. So David says that if secret sins are there, God would not hear your prayer. Now another thing that will cause your prayer not to be answered is despising the law. Solomon says in Proverbs 28 and 9, it says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. There are those that come to church every Sunday, bishops, and they turn a deaf ear to the pastor. But yet, they think God is hearing their prayers. But if you despise the law, God would not hear your prayer. There's a lot of folk think that uh, they can pray to God and reject the pastor. You got to come to the pastor. 
I don't care how you own your way to heaven anyhow. You ain't going nowhere anyhow. But down yonder, praise God, you got to hear the man of God. That would be a disrespect to the man of God that God has placed here if you refuse to obey the law of the pastor. It's important to obey the law of the pastor. 